Shalom. This is Yair Devadi speaking to you from the land of Israel. Today we are going to consider Psalm number 4. The word Psalm, the word Psalm in Hebrew is Tehillah, or Tehillim in the plural. Tehillim is what the name it is usually used. Tehillim literally means praises. And that is what the Psalms are. They are praises to God Almighty. Even though there are different types of Psalms for different occasions, and different moods and different applications. The present psalm is in, is in Hebrew begins Limnazah bin Ginot the David. There's uh, several uh, ways of translating this message. On the whole, it means to the chief conductor, Limnazah, uh, in tunes for David. It may also be translated as saying, uh, to he who grants the victory through the art and music for David. In Hebrew exegesis, commentary on the Bible, there is a principle that uh, in, under set circumstances, different explanations can be applicable at one and the same time, and uh, they will all the explanations are there for a reason, and they have their applications, and they have their their relevance. They have their relevance. As uh, Rabbi Shimshon Raphael Hirsch comments on this psalm, that through music one can obtain a spiritual inspiration. This enables one to overcome whatever adverse forces a person may be facing. King David. King Saul suffered from uh, mental anguish, as we're told in the Bible. He suffered greatly. He was had some type of uh, mental oppression. And King David came to soothe him with, and by playing on the harp. Music has a soothing effect. Mu- mu- music is a medicinal. Uh, mu- uh, music may be used in rehabilitation and in therapy. Music has a power and... Uh, a value of its own. It's one of the gifts that God Almighty has given to us, and those who can should develop it. I myself have no musical talent. Uh, sometimes I sing, I uh, sing at the shepherd's table, and sometimes I sing quite well, and sometimes not. I have a problem, I cannot control the quality of what comes out of my throat. Maybe I should have learned, but I did not. And But some of my children have do have musical talents, one of them, uh, at one stage, uh, began to compose his own music. My gra- grand, great-grandfather in Denmark was a Jew. He was a, a professional musician. He played the, the fl- he played the flute, and he was appointed the king of Denmark at one stage. After that, he moved to England. His name was Jacobi. I've been trying to trace him through historical uh, research and have not found anything yet, but somewhere or other he should surely be mentioned because that would have been an unusual occupation or an an unusual appointment for a Jew in his time. It's worth noting. We are now, this is a short psalm, and we were translating it at as if to say... Roughly, but reasonably correctly, you may rely on our translation, and it's not that different, not that much difference from the regular accepted translations that exist. We begin uh, number verse 1, or verse 2, according to how you uh, count the verses. It says, when I, call, when I call, hear me, O God of my righteousness, out of straits you have opened things up for me. Show me favor and hear my prayer. This is a personal prayer of King David. That and anyone but anyone who wishes may use it. This is why he wrote them down. This is why he gave them to us because they are usable, because they are instruments of supplication, instruments of drawing close to God Almighty. This is what we have. This is what has been given to us, so we should make use of it. It's a personal prayer asking God for help. And Midrash al Kuchimoni points out that this psalm may also be seen as a cry of the tribe of Judah for God to assist them, to help them, and also to bring them closer to their people, that is, to the ten tribes of Israel. So this is important. 
as we find in Deuteronomy 33, 7, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Bring him closer to the ten tribes, bring him closer to the others, and bring the others closer to him. This is what is needed for the future redemption. And he goes on, uh, verse 2, Sons of men, how long will you take, make shame of my honor? Sons of men, how long will you make shame of my, shame of my honor? Sons of men, how long will you make shame of my honor? You love emptiness. You seek falsehood, Seba. Sons of men, Hebrew ben Aish, meaning uh, great men or important men. Even and even today, uh, learned people, uh, great, uh, uh, very people were enjoying high esteem, great prestige, academics and professors and so on, they make fun of the Bible and they belittle the Bible and they tell false things about the Bible. They spread falsehoods about the Bible. They say that the things are in the Bible that are not so, that have been proven as not correct and this is false. No such proofs exist. There's nothing in science or in research that contradicts the Bible. People who say that things are either do not understand the Bible or they do not understand the research they are relying upon. One way or the other, they are spreading falsehoods and their motivations should be examined. Often people want to say things or to believe in things in order to justify certain modes of behavior rather than from objective study. And this, this is even maybe subconscious. We all do things for certain reasons. We're not always aware of why we act or why, why we react as we do. So we should examine ourselves. When we find that our motivations are not 100% kosher, they're not as good as they should be, we should uh, reform ourselves and correct ourselves if possible. Verse 5 says, Know, however, that the Lord has set me apart as a person of his favor. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. David was set apart, David was chosen. And those who attach themselves or dedicate themselves to God Almighty, they are set apart, they are special. They should realize it and they, and they should also realize that they have obligations of their own. Once the, the yoke is taken up, it cannot be put down. You have become a special person, a different person, and different uh, methods and uh, of working and of thinking and of acting and different modes of behavior are expected of you. You are, have to apply yourself to a higher standard. And this is both a blessing and uh, an impediment. So, But we should face up to it and do the best we can according to it. Also says, let emotion fall, let emotion attack you, but do not sin that this words, if emotion attacks you, if you are overcome with desire, nevertheless do not sin. Commune with your heart on your bed and be still, seller. Offer sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. They are, those are verses 4 and 5. Happens that we may not sin when opportunity comes our way. And it may be something that we wanted to do or, want, or needed or thought we needed to do and we did not do it because we believed in God Almighty. And we, we tend to regret this, perhaps. So we should know that uh, we should not regret it. We should be happy that we had the chance to not transgress. We, ha we held up our part of the bargain and God Almighty will help us. God Almighty will compensate us and reward us and, and it will be as if we have a deposit in the bank that of oh, for goodness, for help, that we may need in the future. And if not us, then our children, then... Uh, Others in such a way that we would agree to do it if we knew that the options that were available. So this is worth uh, thinking of and considering. Verse 6. Many are saying, Who will show us what is good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, Lord. And uh, in SRH points out in this Hebrew, this may also be understood to mean set the light of your favor upon us as a mark of our distinction. Let us be shown and seen to be good and to be dedicated to you. Not everyone wants, it's not everyone wants to be set apart from others or, or they might want it to be so in effect, but they do not necessarily want everyone knowing about it. So everyone according to his station, everyone according to how he understands it, the most important point is that we do what we can according to how we can and pray to God that he will help us and guide us and show us the way.
And then in the end it says, put more joy in my heart than they who have grain and wine about in abundance. You make us happy, O oh God. You are our source of happiness. Other people have money. Other people have positions. Other people have different things. And may they be blessed with it. All the best to them. And we do, would like something of that if we could have it. But if God Almighty has decided that this is not for us, it's not good for us, we, so we're also satisfied with that. We are human beings. And we have our, our pulls and our desires and our temptations and our needs. Nevertheless, we trust in God and we believe that the joy of being close to God Almighty is better than anything else in the world. The Lord God of Israel bless you. Thank you.